Now let's take a look at the tools that you'll need in order to become productive with PHP. In our last movie, we looked at the hardware that will be needed to run a dynamic website on the web. For the purposes of development, we can get away without most of this and simply use a single machine with the right kind of software. Let's take a look in detail at the software that you're going to need in order to develop your PHP scripts and to test them out on your machine. First of all, you're going to need some server software. Your choice of server software will depend to a greater or lesser extent on the kind of platform that you're running. The Apache web server runs on both Windows and Linux and a whole range of Unix and GNU systems. There's also Microsoft IIS, which only runs on Windows. And this is also a good product. I wouldn't recommend PWS, Microsoft's earlier personal web server software that shipped, I believe, with Windows 98. PWS has given me no end of trouble. So I recommend that if you go with a Microsoft product, you use IIS rather than PWS. There are also a range of other server software technologies available, such as Zeus, Zatami, and a whole raft of others. But a choice has to be made as to what server you're going to run on your machine. For the purposes of this title, I'm going to be running Apache on my Windows machine. The PHP engine is the next thing that you're going to need to be running on your machine. And this is available from the PHP website, php.net. And this is available in different flavors depending on how comfortable you are with compiling or installing. You can download the source code if you want to compile it yourself. You can also download pre-compiled binaries available for a whole number of different platforms. And for very popular platforms, there are also installations available that pretty much install themselves. The documentation on the PHP website is pretty comprehensive as regards the different platforms and the installation instructions installing on these different platforms. You're also going to need a text editor to write your PHP scripts with. Now, there are a whole range of different products, EditPad and TextPad for Windows, Notepad that comes free with Windows. There are a number of problems with Notepad, um, such as its tendency to add the TXT extension to any file it saves, which is not very useful when you're trying to save a PHP script or any other kind of script that requires a specific extension. However, you can use Notepad if you wish. For the Linux platform, there are also such packages as Emacs and Vim. All of them, apart from Notepad, good text editors. I in no way intend to endorse any of these products or recommend any of them. We're going to be using Editpad for the purposes of this title, but you could use any text editor that you wanted. You're also going to need a web browser to preview your work. Now, it doesn't matter which web browser you use. We're going to be using Microsoft Internet Explorer. We could also use Netscape, Opera, Mozilla, or any of a whole range of other web browsers. Because, as we saw in the last movie, PHP scripts are executed on the server, the capacities cap or capabilities of the web browser are irrelevant to previewing PHP scripts. So long as the web browser works and it can read HTML, then it's satisfactory for our purposes. You're going to need a database management system if you're intending to use your PHP scripts for database connectivity. Once again, it's your own personal preference and needs that should determine which database management system you go for, be it Oracle, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MS SQL Server. 
for the purposes of this title, we're going to be using MySQL, which is also available under an open source license for non-commercial use. One other thing that I should add about writing PHP scripts is that while the most common way of doing it is by using a text editor and a web browser, and that works perfectly well, you can also replace both of these with an integrated development environment. Now, there is no particular product that is endorsed by the PHP organization, but there are a number available on the market, such as PHP Coder, that allow for an integrated scripting space and a preview space, which effectively integrates a browser into the text editor. If we take a look at our text editor that we're going to be using, we can see that the text is stored in the main window and if we want to preview what the PHP will script will look like when it's run through the web server software, then we have to leave our text editor and go to a browser to check that out. However, if we use a product like PHP Coder and we open up the same file here, as we can see, because this is a PHP-specific product, our code has been colored and what kind of script we've entered. And we're also able to use this preview window to test out our script. So the integrated development environment can be a good choice for some users. For the purposes of this title, however, we're going to be using the text editor and browser combination because that's what everyone has and so it's a good basic standard to work with. I'm now going to quickly run through the knowledge that I expect you to have before you start learning PHP with this title. I'm going to expect you to be very familiar with HTML and if you're intending to use a database with PHP, then I expect you to know some basic skills in that database so that you can apply what I teach you in these scripts that I'm going to be using as examples to your own database and how that works. A very important thing is that you know structured query language. Now, if you don't you, if you haven't used a database before, or you don't know it, then I should point out that the virtual training company offers a number of titles on databases. I know there's one for Microsoft SQL Server, which will teach uh, you how to use Microsoft SQL Server. And once I've finished with this PHP title, I'm going to start on a MySQL title. So if there's not a MySQL title out when you're reading this, or viewing this rather, then it will be out very soon. Finally, you're going to complete your knowledge base with PHP through this title. And once you've done that, you'll know everything you need to know to create dynamic websites. In terms of getting help with PHP, Outside of this title, you should download a copy of the manual so that you can look up the different functions and commands of PHP syntax. And as you can see, it gives a very short reference here, but it explains comprehensively all the different functions, but it can't go into very much depth. That's where an introductory guide such as this title comes in and helps you through your learning process as you're getting to know PHP. You should also consider using the online version of the manual, 
this is available at php.net. And the good thing about the online version of the manual is that PHP users have added to the fairly brief set of instructions included within the main body of the manual. And people are able to post at the bottom here with their views and little insights into the way to use different features of PHP. So the online version of the manual is constantly being updated and added to and contributed to according to the whole spirit of open source software. However, I should also point out that the user contributed notes that we're seeing here are contributed by expert users of PHP and are intended to explain points that are not well enough explained by the official PHP documentation. They are not intended for new users of PHP to post their questions. There are forums available for that kind of thing, such as the excellent phpbuilder.com. And this is a great place to go if you're stuck with a certain thing and you want some kind of advice as to where you can go from there. As you can see, the forum is set up so that users can ask questions and other users can help them out with their problems. Once again, however, it's always best to first of all read the manual, then to go to a site such as PHP Builder and run a search for the question that you want answered. And then finally, if you can't find an answer through doing those things, then post your own question. That's about it for this movie. And in our next movie, we're going to have a look at the difference between scripting and viewing.